Good morning, welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue and we're here in Growing Zone 6B in New England. It is November. Um, we are coming up on Thanksgiving this week and the weather is still cooperating. So we're getting in on it the most we can. This is day two of the run build for the chickens. I'll show you some footage in a little while from yesterday. Um, we are doing our best to winterize this coop, give the birds someplace sheltered where they can be when it's super cold. But the other thing that we've really wanted to do um, with anticipation of snow in our headlights is get a static run built so that we don't have to supervise these chickens. <laughs> I don't know if you know, but we are, <laughs> we have been those people all summer long and <laughs> We've been walking our chickens. There's just so much wildlife around here and free ranging them is a little bit dicey. So we're building them their own run right now where they can go and be chickens and do chicken things and not have to look out for people stressing them out while they're out there doing their business. So Bill and Lib have been putting in this stuff behind me. Um, and you'll notice that it looks a little weird. It's hard to see. They've put chicken wire up all around it. There's a space for a door so that we can get in and out and clean it easily and feed the birds easily. And there's a structure in there to hold the bird netting. We have a lot of hawks here and that's been our primary concern with their safety and well-being, our overhead predators. So we've got some netting I think, honestly, I feel like that's going to be the trickiest bit on this whole thing. We may have to cue the, the theme song from Benny Hill while we're putting it up, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, and just getting it all secure. So come on along. I'll show you what's happening. What's going on here? We're putting in a chicken run. Like a static run? Like a static run. That'll be fenced in and we'll have netting over the top and that way we can just open the coop in the morning and let them out and let them roam around in their own little happy place. I love the idea of sovereign chickens. Okay, so What's this up? so this um, upside down U-shaped thing, is that, what is that for? That's to secure the netting and make it like a tent so it slopes down to the sides so it'll help keep the net from drooping in and help keep it off our heads when we go into the run okay and we've got fencing to do all this uh, we should all we'll right find out So what you doing, Bill? So right now we're finishing the last of the chicken wire that's gonna make the perimeter of the fence. And then we're gonna cover the door with wire because no good having the wire if they've got an open door. And then we will start with the covering netting to protect the chickens from death from above. Oh, but we're going to put the fence in too. Yeah, but that'll do, uh, we'll do that after the netting. After the netting? After the netting. Okay. Are you going to need a knife? Probably. Okay, I'll go grab one. Yeah, this isn't cutting it. The netting that I purchased, I got from Pin and Hatch Farms, and I'll try and put a link down in the description for you. 
it is super strong. Um, in fact, we're having some trouble cutting it with the box knife. So it's an inch by an inch. You can see this is really, really strong. It's not like ch cheap netting that you use on the plants or anything. This is, and like I said, we're, we're even encountering, we're even encountering a little bit of difficulty cutting it down to size with the box cutter. Um, so I'm feeling really confident about this in terms of protection for the flock from overhead predators. Retrospect, I probably should have bought less netting. I bought 25 by 100 feet because I had no idea how much we would actually need in this. So we've got it all out and draped up. And the next thing that's gonna happen is the guys are gonna go through and staple it to that support in the middle. We're talking about possibly doing some more pilot lines to like the roof of the coop to just give it a little more support from underneath. This stuff for sure is gonna stretch out a little bit as the season goes on and it gets wet and it gets cold and freezes and all that good stuff. So we may have to tighten it up a little bit as the weeks go by. Um, so here we go. Actually, we might want to put that at less steep of an angle. Yeah, just a little bit. What are you guys setting it in with? Uh, we just got an old pipe clamp. Tell me a little bit about this project. What was this like? What was this like? Ah, uh, this was complicated and then it went really smoothly. So <laughs> the netting went a lot better than I thought it was gonna go. The netting was was spectacular. It um much more heavy duty, much more user friendly than I thought it was gonna be. Oh me too. Um we could put good tension on it. It secured to everything really well. Um, and we have so much left over. <laughs> we have 75 feet of it. 100 feet is a lot more feet than I thought it was. I was afraid we would run out, so I overbought. So next time we have a run to enclose, we now have net. We have plenty of net left over. So. Yeah. Although I think the 25 by 25 would have been just a touch too small. 
Yeah, well, that's been the theme of the day. Yeah. You know, uh, there's there's a hunk of this that doesn't have fencing yet because uh, we need to go purchase four one feet. more roll. Yeah, four feet of <laughs> it. Um, but yeah, the chickens seem to be doing really well in there. They, I mean, as soon as we let them out into it before we even got the snow fencing up, they seemed immeasurably calm like calmer than I've seen them. And they're just, they're just scratching around. They're having a good time. I haven't heard a peep out of Zuzu in hours. Cue Zuzu. No. No, he's hey. tail up, face down, eating food. Yeah, they're really happy in here now. They can explore. You know, we don't have to hover around them to make sure they don't get into the neighbor's yard again to what they're not supposed to get into the neighbor's yard that's a big deal um, we've made peace with the neighbors we've made peace with the neighbors i am so happy oh my gosh big very big deal <sighs> and uh and now it's just a matter of we get up in the morning or you get up in the morning i get up in the morning <laughs> open the coop and just leave the door open and they can come out and wander um, already they've been wandering in and out from the enclosed coop out into the, the open run now. Um, we put a ladder in for them. They're having a field day on the it. The song is already up on it. Um, and they just, they seem really relaxed. She just, she kind of slid down the side there. <laughs> yeah, they do. They, they seem pretty chill. Um, I'm so happy for them. Happy playground for chickens. Bark. So the process that you all used was you put tea posts in. We we started then... with tea posts and marked the perimeter with the tea posts. Well, actually, we started with string and laid out where we were gonna put everything because we have saplings growing up. We have berry bushes, so we had to kind of thread the needle through everything. <laughs> The ground is not leveled here by any stretch of the imagination. No. <laughs> we have berry mounds and dips and all that. So we had to account for that, but we put in tea posts all the way around, put in the frame for the door and the, the top beam for the netting. Mm -hmm. And then we put in the chicken wire, which is attached to the, the frame, the door frame and the T-posts, and then attached to the coop on the other side. Then we put the netting over the top and attach that to the chicken wire. And then we put the snow fencing around and attach that to everything. And this was after you had winterized. And if you're gonna try that winterizing, um, it was fairly simple. I mean, we just get the, the thin plastic corrugated sheets and just cut it to fit and put it in with screws the idea being that when spring hits we can just go through pull them out and then put them back in in the fall which is i think a good idea um put your run up first before you put the sheeting yeah. on because we had to take a bunch of the panels of the sheeting off so we could attach the coop and then put the sheeting back on talk about the door <laughs> <coughs> the door was a trial um Couple good pointers. If you got a wheelbarrow that you could bring in and out, measure it before you make the door. Uh huh. Ours is about half an inch too narrow. Um, but if you put your shoulders into it, you can force it through. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, you've been tipping the wheelbarrow. Yeah. And every time we pulled the fencing or we pulled the netting, it shifted the doorway slightly. So we've been doing a lot of readjusting of the door to make sure everything's manual override everything's all set um and then we put a bracer bar in the middle of the door once we knew everything was good we put a bracer bar in the middle of the door so now everything's good to go <laughs> um but we leveled on all three sides to make sure everything was up upright and as square as it could possibly be and then we just yanked everything out of shape again and then had to put it back so what what's left we need a latch on the inside of the door yep a couple of carabiners yep or maybe one carabiner. one carabiner yes yeah, we don't need a carabiner one latch on the, on the inside. inside of the door and 
I just have to put in some paving stones around the doorway so it doesn't get muddy. Yeah. And then we're done. So. But right now it's, it's, I mean, it's fine as it is. You know, the rest of it is just minor touches here and there. Yeah. And the chickens look super happy. <laughs> so thank you so much for hanging out with us today while we got our run organized and finished putting it together. We'll be doing a few last minute touches, but that's about it. Chicken run is done. Chicken run. So thanks for hanging out. We'll catch you up soon. Take care. Bye. rocks.